some uh, some papers up. Okay, folks. So um, we're going to get started here again. Um, uh, in this uh, second part of, of today's uh, live trip, um, we're going to be looking at motivation for HBIS models in public health. And I have a, a kind of um, substantive challenge here in the sense that the audience here is very diverse. And to some people here, it's going to be old hat. To some people here, it's going to be new, um, new thoughts. And, the, and to some people here, the, the health terminology is going to be very unfamiliar. So I'm going to just try to um, weave between the Charybdis and Scylla of, of uh, you know, this uh, dilemma and uh, see what I, I can do to provide some motivations, um, knowing that it's not going to be perfect for, for everyone. Um, so I think much of the motivation here is uh, it lies in the goal of public health is in some sense redirecting the course of change. This is a quote from, uh, from Bobby Milstein um, by which he's, he's motivated uh, uh, discussions of, of much of the modeling work he's been involved in. Um, and this graph shows a uh, number of cases of, of uh, sexually transmitted uh, infection known as chlamydia, reported cases uh, across Canada. Um, and uh, as a result of a great investment in pub of public health resources, most notably contact tracing, but also investments in early uh, detection such as in pregnancy, a number of cases of chlamydia really, really declined. Um, over time in the, in the 1990s. And there was a sense that, you know, we're really making progress in addressing this bug. But if you look at, you know, the subsequent case numbers, they rose and they rose quite dramatically to the point where people in the late 2000s were talking about a crisis, a real crisis facing sexually transmitted infections, control of sexually transmitted infections uh, based on the, the very large number of cases and this was not associated with a huge rise in the population or anything. But interpreting this is a very difficult challenge. You know, why is this rising? Is it a sign of a tremendous problem, or is it a sign that we're actually doing testing better? Is it a sign of a sign of, of uh, testing regimen where, you know, bec uh, it turns out one of the things that came in here in the in the early two thousands was less invasive testing strategies. So. Uh, I won't go into the, the gory details, but suffice it to say that a lot of men who had previously have stayed away from STI clinics um, for fear of discomfort, um, you know, were, were actually willing to come in with their partners and be tested uh, because it involved a urine test rather than, than a more invasive form. Um, and, uh, and so there was, there's a lot of debate um, as to uh, the degree of crisis and, the, in fact, the interpretation of this data. And you know, under implicit in all of this was the question of what's really going on? What's, what are the processes that are changing over time to account for this fall and this rise? And are they signs of a failing healthcare system or are they signs of great success in a healthcare system in bringing people in for, for treatment? And among other things, we contributed um, to this discussion by, by showing in a very simple model how you could reproduce this using only assumptions about um, uh, on, the, on the testing side, that it was actually probably a sign that we're draining the swamp. Um, uh, so, um, you know, within this area, though, we're, we're grappling with, with great complexity. Complexity involves